Well, can I get a quick thumbs up from all my dear students if my audio video is fine? Uh, let me check uh, if you all can hear me. Everyone, can I just get a quick thumbs up from all of you? Okay, great. I request a quick thumbs up from all my dear students if my audio video is going smooth. Great. Okay. So today, uh, from today onwards, we'll be starting with a very important session, and that is last moment revisions for the FMG students. So welcome all of you. I'm Dr. Cheshta Agarwal, your need PGI educator on the best online platform. Now, before we go ahead, let us very quickly go through some of the important features on An Academy right now. So at An Academy, we have introduced a pattern which is known as compete, where you can battle with someone like you. You can compete. You can challenge. and this feature is now active or live on the an academy android app so what are you waiting for please go ahead and start competing today and let's know where exactly you stand now for revising or for preparing for neat pg 2023 we are giving everyone a one month free subscription on the plus uh plus subscription whatever subscriptions you have taken uh, you will get a one month free so just get a 3 month plus 1 month subscription so total 4 month subscription in rupees 13770 you can use my code cheshta10 and get yourself enrolled in this amazing offer this is a diwali offer or we should say uh, you know like this is a offer which will help you achieve your goal with more comfort you can take any subscription using the same code uh, whether you want a plus iconic light and mbbs profan The code is same. My name Cheshta and ten in the front of it. An Academy Light is a very good subscription right now because we have launched a, a An Academy Question Bank 2.0. So I would be requesting all of you, those who have already prepared, just use this Light subscription, which is just rupees five thousand eight hundred thirty-two for six month access to the MCQs on this platform. Okay. Now let us start with the first question today. I hope everybody is ready for a lot of MCQs. The first question on the screen is this please read it a 10 year old boy with a painful bogey swelling of the scalp multiple sinuses purulent discharge easily plucability of hair lymph node enlargement in the occipital region which of the following would be the most helpful diagnostic for this particular great area A 10 year old boy with a bogey swelling of the scalp multiple sinuses purulent discharge easily plucable hair lymph node enlargement which is the or which of the following is the most helpful for making the diagnosis anybody can tell me the correct answer here great so if you look at the question uh, the image shows that there is a lot of swelling on the scalp the image uh, is that of a boy who is a pre pubertal age group please remember whenever you see scaling loss of hair swelling sinus discharge in a patient who is in pre pubertal age group think of fungal infection first now why i am giving you a lot of stress on the pre pubertal age group why it doesn't occur after puberty anybody can tell me what is that factor which prevent the development of fungal infection on the scalp after the puberty please remember it is the sebum so the sebum which is produced after the androgens comes into the circulation that is after puberty this sebum has an anti fungal property and it does not allow the fungus to grow so this is a very classical age that is a pre pubertal age for development of tinea capitis and please remember you do a koh mount to look for the uh, you know the fungal elements in the body the next question is on your screen very nice edison danya ashwarya the next question is on your computer screen a 35 year old male develops purple red oval macule after taking metronidazole there is a history of similar lesion at the same site 6 month back what will be your diagnosis erythema multiforme urticaria annular lichen planus or fixed drug eruption so anybody can tell me the correct answer of this anyone you have very classical lesion if you want i can just show you the image uh, let us zoom it for you so this is a image of a patient you can see some pigmented lesions on the trunk similar lesions are present this is a little focused image of it history of drug intake very nice edison this is a fixed drug eruption please remember drug reactions they are important 
there are three topics from which you get questions one is fixed drug eruption the neurodema multiforme and the severe form that is sgs and 10 these three topics very important for your upcoming fmg exam so please do revise it very very clearly okay now why it is known as a fixed drug reaction because whenever patient takes the drug the reaction occurs on the same site so it is fixed site for drug reaction moving to the next question a female had hyperpigmented patches here on the lower body sense birth what can be the diagnosis here on the lower body sense birth what can be the diagnosis anyone can tell me the answer Anybody can tell me the correct answer? I hope my audio video is going smooth. Great. Now this is a patient, this is an image of what is known as a giant congenital melanocytic nevus. Look at this image. You can see that the lower half of this patient, there is a hyperpigmented patch. And if you notice very carefully, there is presence of thick coarse hair. This is a very classical image of giant congenital melanocytic nevus. Now please remember it's a pre-malignant condition and that is why you need to ask these patients to keep up on a regular follow-up because if there is any sudden change in the lesion, for example, the color of the lesion, the border, whether it starts to change, evolute, please remember it shows that it is going into the malignancy form. So it's a pre-malignant condition. Why it is known as giant whenever the size of congenital melanocytic nevus is more than 20 centimeters square when the size is more than 20 centimeters square and when there is associated hypertrichosis in both these condition you will call it as giant congenital melanocytic nevus next question eczema which can lead to this condition now for all those students who have seen this image for the first time please remember this is a very classical image of exfoliative dermatitis it's a very classical image for exfoliative dermatitis a very classical image of exfoliative dermatitis which is a severe form where the skin starts to exfoliate more than 90 percent of the body becomes red it becomes dry it becomes exfoliative so the question is which among the following will never go to the stage of exfoliative dermatitis Medical Edison's, Eswarya, uh, Danya, very nice. Please remember, other than numular eczema, which is a very localized form, rest all three can convert into exfoliative form. But numular eczema, it's usually a localized variety. It never gets converted itself to the diffuse exfoliative dermatitis. Next question. Very favorite question. Those who are giving the FMG exam, they might be knowing it. It's a very frequently asked PYQ. I have seen the same question so many times being asked. So what is the correct answer? Also with overhanging and undermined edges in the neck region as shown in the image given below, what can be the diagnosis? Tubercular lymph node, malignant cervical lymphadenopathy, syphilis or reactive lymphadenopathy. What is the correct answer? Also with overhanging and undermined edges in the neck region as shown in the image given below. So this is one of my own patient. Let me just show you the image of this particular thing. Let me just show you the image. Look at this. So this is a patient. You can see that on the neck you have some nodules. On the neck you have some nodules. And at the superficial part of these nodules we have ulcers. Now the patient do not report any pain, any inflammation. These are cold abscesses and this is very classical of tubercular lymph node which is known as scrofuloderma. Remember TB of the skin one of the very frequently asked topics. So anybody preparing for FMG please make sure that you do this topic. Next alcoholic with a history of diarrhea, delirium, diagnosis. What can be the diagnosis? Very characteristic skin lesion. Let me just elaborate for you that we have a well defined well-defined burnt out appearance burnt out appearance it is not exact burning it's just an appearance which resemble as of the skin is burnt so alcoholic with a history of diarrhea delirium what can be the diagnosis
What is the correct answer here? Anybody can tell me. I hope I am audible and visible. Yes, good. So what is the correct answer here? What is the correct answer here? Please remember the correct answer of this question is niacin deficiency. If you remember, I told you that a well-defined photodermatitis that is associated with diarrhea and delirium. Remember the three Ds of pellagra or niacin deficiency, dermatitis, diarrhea, delirium and if it is not taken care of it can ultimately lead to death it can ultimately lead to death in these individuals clear all of you it can lead to death in these individuals so very classical is option number one that is very classical of niacin deficiency the next question is on your computer screen please tell me the correct answer great Kaposi variliform eruption. Now, can anybody here tell me what is the another name given to this? What is the alter, another name, alternate name given to this particular condition? Anybody can tell me here. What is Kaposi variliform eruption? Also known as. What is Kaposi variliform eruption? Also known as. Very nice, amazing, great. Please remember this is no, nothing but eczema herpeticum. Eczema herpeticum this is nothing but eczema herpeticum very very important it is nothing but eczema herpeticum now as the name suggests it has eczema plus it has herpes so what happens in the individuals what happens in the individuals specifically when there is atopic dermatitis the atopic dermatitis patients have a barrier dysfunction they have defective barrier and because of the defective barrier, there is more entry of herpes. Usually, herpes lesions are localized on the mucocutaneous junction. For example, lips or uh, you know like around the lips, around the genitals. They are usually localized to the mucocutaneous junction. But in the patients of atopic dermatitis, because of defective barrier, you see a generalized period of herpes lesion and that is actually known as eczema herpeticum. That is actually known as eczema herpeticum. Can I get a quick thumbs up from all my dear students if this is clear? Is this clear? Great. Now moving to the next question. Identify, identify this physical urticaria. Identify this physical urticaria. Identify this physical urticaria. Identify this physical urticaria. What is the correct answer? Identify this uh, this identify this type of physical urticaria. Anyone can tell me the answer? I hope I'm audible and visible to all my dear students. I think there is some breakage in the connection. Great. So please remember, if you look at this image, this particular image, there is some lines. So when you scratch these lesions, when you scratch these lesions, or when you scratch these individuals, they tend to develop. They tend to develop some long straight lines with erythema and redness over it. This is a very classical physical urticaria, which is known as dermographism, or I should say that this is the most common type of physical urticaria this is the most common type of physical urticaria moving to the next question moving to the next question i hope i'm audible and visible edison ashwarya can i get a thumbs up from everyone okay a patient presents with a rash in more than 30 percent of the skin with hemorrhagic crusting on the lips what can cause this can anybody tell me what is the diagnosis here look at the image now here this image number one shows crusting on the lips image number two and three shows you have purpuric lesions which is present in more than 30 percent of the body surface area 
please remember this is very important the area of the body which is involved this part the area of the body which is involved this is something which is very important for all my students to know okay so can you tell me what is the answer here a patient with rash in more than 30% of the skin which is hemorrhagic what can be the cause look at the image can you see this image this is one of our own patient this was referred to us from pediatric department now there was a history that patient was having some sore throat and for which she got some antibiotic injections and after that it has started this is a very classical example of toxic very classical example of toxic epidermal necrolysis this is a very classical feature of toxic epidermal necrolysis a very classical feature of toxic epidermal necrolysis there is one more feature one more thing which is known as steven johnson syndrome please remember in steven johnson syndrome the features are same like that of toxic epidermal necrolysis but the difference is that the body surface area involved in sgs is less than 10% while the body surface area involved in 10 is more than 30% so that is the difference between the two the correct answer of this question is option number 1 drugs is the most common cause for both of them okay and i should say that there is a very simple mnemonic to remember uh, let us just uh, write down what are the mnemonics to remember the drugs uh, causing steven johnson syndrome and 10 if you are interested just write it down the drugs causing the drugs causing sgs and 10 mnemonic is what is known as natural and clear natural and clear soap natural and clear soap natural and clear soap so n c s o a p what does n stands for anybody n stands for nevirapine N stands for nevirapine. N stands for NSAIDs. C stands for carbamazepin. C stands for carbamazepin. S stands for sulfa group of drug. S stands for sulfa group of drug. O stands for oxycam. A stands for A stands for allopurinol. and even anti malarials and p stands for p stands for phenytoin phenobarbital and penicillin group phenytoin phenobarbital phenytoin phenobarbital and penicillin group of drug and penicillin group of drug so these three features are very important or these are the drugs which causes sgs at 10 moving to the next question a male patient presented with a patchy loss of hair on the scalp eyebrow beard he has also history of rapid graying of the hair in few areas what can be the likely diagnosis i hope my audio video is going all smooth can i get a quick thumbs up I want all of you. If you want more such sessions, uh, just subscribe to An Academy using the code Chesh Star Ten. You can find me. Just type Dr. Chesh Star Agarwal, and you can find all my classes. Okay, my name is Dr. Chesh Star Agarwal. My code is Chesh Star Ten. So, if you want such sessions or more such interesting classes, just let me know. A male patient presents with patchy loss of hair on the scalp, eyebrow, beard. He has also history of rapid graying of hair in a few areas. What can be the likely diagnosis? Anyone? The correct answer of this question is alopecia areata. Please remember, in alopecia areata, the grey hairs are always spared. The reason why grey hairs are spared because in alopecia areata, what happens? The T lymphocytes they are directed against the pigmented part of the hair. in the grey hair or in the white hair the pigmented part is missing and that is why the white hairs are spared and this phenomena is known as going white overnight phenomena the patient will go white overnight going night going white overnight phenomena 
the next question <coughs> i want everyone to look at the image very very carefully please try to look at the image very important nevus apota nevus of eto mongolian spot or hypomelanosis of eto what is the correct answer of this question the correct answer of this question now look at this image when i zoom this image you can see that there is a bluish discoloration which is present on the face now if you look very carefully i hope i am audible and visible if you look very very carefully yes i think i am audible and visible so if you look very carefully there is some bluish discoloration which is seen and this is not crossing the midline it is present only on the one side of the face it is not crossing the midline present only on the one part of the face this is a very classical image of nevus of ota a very very classical image of nevus of ota now what happens in nevus of ota there is dermal melanocytic proliferation usually melanocytes are located in the epidermis that everybody knows but sometimes what happens during the embryogenesis the melanocyte migration is defective by melanocytes they are not synthesized in the epidermis right they are synthesized in the neural crest so during the embryogenesis from the neural crest they migrate to the ectoderm in the skin in the epidermis and during their migration if there is some problem they get arrested to that location when they get arrested in the dermis they can give rise to bluish discoloration and if this bluish discoloration is present on the face it is known as nevus of ota if it is present on the shoulder it is known as nevus of eto if it is present on the lumbosacral region it is known as mongolian spot this is very important okay i have seen a lot of question being asked from this particular topic next question identify this it's a very simple uh, you know instrument which we use uh, now and then in our opd is a very simple simple image this is what is this and what uh, you know we use it for a very simple image and what we use it for anyone very nice you can see that there is a loop a very shiny loop which is present which is then very nice so those who have already used it they might be knowing it it is a molluscum curate what is molluscum curate it is a loop like thing with very sharp edges this is very sharp so what you do the molluscum lesions are like this we will take this instrument and we will put the loop like this and we will give a tangential force when we give a tangential force the whole molluscum will get removed and when it is when it get removed you will see a white uh, you know uh, greasy cheesy material coming out of this small papule that is actually the keratinocytes infected with the molluscum contagiosum virus okay so for removing or for treating the patients of molluscum we don't give any antiviral drugs we just remove them uh, with the help of a instrument which is known as molluscum curate and this is the image of molluscum curate next another image based question it's an instrument which we use i hope you all know about it it's a very common thing uh, in your opds if you have attended dermatology rounds in your classes or if you have you know like visited a dermatologist for some complaint this is a very frequently used bedside instrument usually present in the clinics great it's a wood lamp great it's a wood lamp now what is the feature of wood lamp if you see that this a power switch this is a power plug and there's a button here so when you put this into the electric charge and when you switch on the button what happens this instrument will emit uv radiations it will start emitting uv rays now on the under surface of this instrument there is a filter which allow only the uv rays of one wavelength to come out this filter is made up of nickel oxide and barium silicate nickel oxide and barium silicate and because of this filter only the 365 nanometers comes out now all those lesions which possess the property of fluorescence they will absorb this uv radiation and they will emit a light of longer wavelength which comes out and which is visible through this glass window which is visible through this glass window 
so you see different colors depending of the wavelength you see whether it is green whether it is yellow whether it is uh, you know red so depending upon the light which is reflected back through this glass window you can diagnose the patient's condition the answer to this question is option number 2 can i get a quick thumbs up very important question now this is a histopathological hpe very important i just want to tell one thing that whenever you get a question of hpe that is histopathology try to mark dermoepidermal junction so this is the dermoepidermal junction try to mark the dermoepidermal junction when you mark the epidermal junction you can at least make out that the problem is in the epidermis or dermis now if you look at this image it is clear that there is something going on in the epidermis because in the epidermis you can see that there is increased thickness this is stratum corneum which is increasing in its thickness known as hyperkeratosis and if you look carefully you have a lot of blue dots which are present can you see a lot of blue dots so increase in the thickness with a lot of blue dot this is parakeratosis which is nothing but retention of the nucleus parakeratosis which is nothing but retention of the nucleus retention of the nucleus is this point clear to all of you so retention of the nucleus as well as hyperkeratosis with collection of neutrophils this is the collection of neutrophils collection of neutrophils in the epidermis this is known as micro mundro abscess now i'll tell you one thing that if you look at the blue dots here and if you look at the blue dots here these blue dots are little larger more broader compared to these so this is the nucleus but this is the nucleus of keratinocyte but this is the nucleus of neutrophil collection of neutrophil which is micro mundro abscess it is the diagnostic characteristic histopathological diagnostic characteristic of psoriasis so the correct answer here becomes option number 3 great moving to the next question moving to the next question <clears throat> anyone can tell me the answer we have three more minutes and we'll be taking more of such sessions so don't worry i will try to uh, you know like post more of such classes every day uh if time permits we can take two sessions like that every day female developed this lesion with increase in size which is increasing in the size at the time of puberty what is the correct answer a female develop this lesions with increase in size at the time of puberty what is the correct answer so very nice this is a very classical baker's nevus now let me show you this image actually it is a very smaller one and that is why you are not able to see it there is a brown color plaque which is present on the trunk the question says that the lesion is increasing more at the time of puberty this is one of the characteristic feature of baker's nevus in baker's nevus the nevus cells have androgen receptors in them these androgen receptors what does it do the androgen receptor has a tendency to to increase so at the time of puberty when the circulating androgen increases this the size of these lesions are also increasing okay clear so the answer of this question is next question identify this condition dystrophic calcification tuberous xanthoma lipoma phrenoderma what is the correct answer what is the correct answer what is the correct answer here i hope am i audible and visible to you am i audible and visible to all of you can i get a quick thumbs up great the correct answer of this question is identify this condition it is option number 2 tuberous xanthoma please look at this image please look at this image now if you look at these lesions they are present on the elbow that is against the tendon and they are yellowish broad soft to form growths these are nothing this is not toad skin see whenever i show this image there is always one or two students who get confused 
प्लीज रिमेंबर माई स्टूडेंट टोट स्किन इज डिफरेंट टोट स्किन इज कंप्लीटली डिफरेंट दिस इज नॉट द टोट स्किन टोट स्किन हैज फॉलीक्यूलर पैप्यूल्स फॉलीक्यूलर पैप्यूल्स ओनली दैट पार्ट विच हैज हेयर इन इट इट विल इंक्रीज बट दिस इज ट्यूबरस क्लेरोसिस इफ यू लुक एट दीज लीजन दे आर वेरी स्मूथ दे आर वेरी स्मूथ दे आर नॉट पॉइंटेड Now, just give me a second. I am uploading that. Uh, I will. I will just put that image of Rhino Dama. Just give me a second. So, uh, this was the image which I have shown you just now, and this is the image of tuberous xanthoma. Okay. Now, how does Rhino Dama look like? Can you differentiate between the two? In Rhino Dama, if you focus, the only part is the part from where the hair comes out. They are pointed lesions. This is a toad skin. this is a toad skin but if you look at the previous image it is completely different you see smooth there is infiltration of the skin or the tendon by the fat it is not specific to the follicular outflow so that is the difference between the two conditions okay so with this we are done with the today's session i hope everybody have enjoyed i request all of you if you want to take an academy subscription try to use my code this code will give you amazing discount the code is cheshta10 Right now we are giving one month free subscription to all the students so I would be requesting all of you to please go ahead and get